Today on Roll for Crit, we're taking you to court with our preview for the Kickstarter game Lawyer Up from Rock Manor Games. This is a two-player game, 1v1, centers around a court trial, and each player is going to be playing the role of a lawyer, defense or prosecution, and like with a real trial, your goal will be to sway the opinions of all of the jurors. So if you are the defense, then you only need at least one of these jurors to be on your side in the blue circles over here. If you are the prosecution, you're going to need to convince all of them and get all of them in the red, possibly even locking them in so their opinions cannot be swayed at all. This game actually is variable. You'll play different cases. So different cards may come up, even different conditions for the jury. You're going to have three different arguments for each side. You're going to decide how your team's going to argue. For example, the defense is going to use eyewitness testimony, trying to appeal to more of the justice of the law and using evidence, while the prosecution is going to appeal more to the emotions and logic of the uh, jurors. Each juror does lean a certain way, but this matters more for the witnesses you're going to call because they actually tell you which witnesses you're going to use. There are plenty more. You won't be using all of them. There's also going to be some unique cards. For example, obviously we have a defendant here. Only the defense can call this defendant, but the prosecution is going to start with the murder weapon in their hand. Oh yeah. That's a big piece of evidence. You it's want a that. pretty good card. <laughs> Usually important. <laughs> now, what the other big thing that's going to happen in, regardless of which case you're playing, is you're going to have the discovery phase. You will have some basic cards that you will always have as the defense of prosecution, but there'll be a huge stack of cards. We already sort of have it fitted here of cards in the case, pretty much a bunch of evidence that was gathered throughout the case. You're going to take three cards, look at them, take one for yourself, give one to your opponent, and put one in the buried evidence phase. You're going to do this until the entire deck is done, and you have a nice little buried evidence pile, and you have a nice sized deck. So these cards will have a lot of different symbols on them. Let's pull out some now. They're going to have a symbol here. It's pretty much slated towards the prosecution or defense, or it could be neutral. We have symbols for matching, which we'll get to later, as well as abilities. Depending on who currently has favor with the judge, in this case, it's the prosecution, that player will get to call a witness from one of these available choices. There are a number of reasons you might want to call certain ones. Uh, some of them might give better head starts, points to your side. Some of them might have specific abilities that will matter to you or different symbols that you'd like to match for your special goals or cards that you have in your hand. All kinds of reasons. Whatever the case may be, say you call this one right here, uh, then you would look at that and this would show you your starting point values. So in this case, this shows you one point for the prosecution. The other side is going to start with the number of points listed over here, but if it's not in their color, they don't get access to it. So in this case, it might be better for the prosecution to wait because maybe they want those three points if the other player calls it instead. Lots of different things that you might want to take into consideration. Then that player who called the witness is going to get to play one card from their hand. So there's a few different types of cards. A lot of times you're going to be playing evidence or perhaps an argument, but ultimately you're trying to match these symbols to a symbol on here. Now you only need to match one. So in this case, that's perfectly legal. Uh, but if you didn't have any matching symbols, you couldn't play that card. Your next card is gonna need to have that scale symbol there in order to match up again. Procedures are special cards. As you can see, they have all the symbols present there. So they will work with any matching that you want. That's very convenient, but they have special actions. Now, if you don't want to use them to play them onto the witness, you could play them over to a side area and those will be able to give you special abilities later on. They have different actions. Usually they relate to whether or not the judge is on your favor at that any given moment. Then they'll flip the judge back to the other player's side. There's all kinds of things. Again, like a real court case, you're worrying about what the judge might do. Otherwise, these things have abilities that could occur as soon as you play them. Uh, for instance, this one, has an effect if this witness were an expert. In this case, they're not, but some of them may be experts as listed at the top of their cards. Or they might do something if they're the last card that you played and you won. So it is important also the order that you play these cards in. You want to take into account maybe all your cards match, but you don't necessarily want to cover any of them up at given any given time. Uh, there are also some cards that are arguments. These are often very powerful, but they can be objected to. Each player has three objection tokens 
And if they flip one of them, they cancel that argument. They don't like that, that's really bad, and that player has to play a new card, which could really damage their case. Ultimately, you go back and forth, each player will have a bunch of cards on both sides, presumably, uh, and then you will count up, yeah, whatever works, you will count up their points that are added up from over here. So now, some of those are neutral, which means they'll go to whoever played them. Some of them, as we said, are specific to a player. So in this case, those three points right there don't matter to the defense side because they're not for the defense. Whoever has the higher point total gets to claim that witness. As a reward, they get to take the difference between those point values and sway that number of jurors. So one sway is moving a token one time in one direction. If you're the prosecution, you want to go towards your side, defense towards the defendant's side. And again, the prosecution, if they manage to get them down to this lock icon, then that guy is locked in for life, unless there's a card with some special ability that may change that. So that's really valuable, and they really need to work on getting all of those guys to their side. There may be some other bonuses from winning or from victory conditions on cards that you played that will also let you do things like sway more jurors, flip the judge, or other effects. Afterwards, you're going to take the cards, put them in your discard pile. Whoever claims the witness will put them in their claimed witness pile. And that's important because once you go through all the witnesses, you're then going to have closing arguments. Now, what that means is you're going to look at the initial argument in this case, the defense is trying to look for magnifying glasses and these scales. And you're going to count those symbols on the witnesses you claimed. And depending on what your case is, and the arguments written down here, you're going to gain amount of influence equal to the difference and try to sway some more jurors. The defense will be able to unlock jurors at this time if they're desperate enough. Uh, it will depend on how many points are and how well the prosecution's doing. We'll also mention, by the way, if every process, every juror hits that lock symbol, you're done. But it, it's completely convinced the case is over. So you do need to be careful, uh, defense. You really need to keep one guy alive. <laughs> yeah, it is possible for the prosecution to swing things early and end the game outright. Uh, but it's interesting, you know, in that way that it is, you're both going for the same thing, but in very different ways, so to speak. So it does have an asymmetrical feel to it and also kind of this tug of war between the two players of, no, I'm going to convince this one, I'm going to convince this one. And in a nice way where it seems like the prosecution maybe has a harder time early on, uh, but whereas the defense is like, oh, all I need to worry about is just keeping at least one of them alive. But ideally, it will work out so that both players have a tough fight and that by the end of it, you might be just fighting over one juror. Yeah, we had one match where like pretty much because of a mistake early on, you know, it became locked in for like almost all, all of them. And then these three were just like, no, I can't <laughs> let you touch them. Yeah. But what's interesting to me is a lot of mystery games like Sherlock Holmes or any of these detective games is usually just, you're solving the mystery, it's done, that's the murderer. This isn't that. This actually feels like the courtroom case in Actually, it's really funny because a lot of people have said because of things like Law & Order, CSI, a lot of jurors don't like cases when they isn't very clean cut because they think <laughs> that everything should be very obvious who the murderer is. <laughs> and this game is that. You're not, it's not a guarantee you know that this person, uh, uh, Jessica, actually killed her father. Uh, it's going to be a lot of cards make things very iffy. And I think yeah. that makes things a lot, a lot interesting. You know, it is a lot more of like... You're not trying to really solve the mystery. You're just trying to prove if the person's guilty enough or not guilty enough. Yeah, it's, it's up to you to decide what you believe is the actual makeup of the case. All you care about is convincing the jury. Uh, so it is very interesting that way. And it's, it's not a game where it's like, oh, once I've played it, now I know who the killer is. You know what I mean? Uh, it's certainly a more abstract than that. But all of the cards, of course, have all this flavor on them. Like, you're not just playing, oh, this is a matching card. You sh are showing off, oh, defensive wounds, or look, I found a threatening letter. So you can go into it with as much or as little of that role-playing, storytelling side of it as you want. And because, well, for example, we keep bringing up the color abilities. The defense could still play this because mm -hmm. the, uh, I mean, this one's a bad example, but I believe the cameras I have here, yes, this one, when victories lock or unlock something. So sure, just like in a real case, 
the defense could use that and try to spin it to their favor. Yeah, yeah. And the fact that this is case one, this is going to be a thing where you have different cases to add to your game, means you can really change up the game of like different cards completely, uh, the different arguments, bring in different witnesses. It, it really is very interesting of like how this idea of taking a very scenario-based game and taking a genre which usually is the solve it, but it isn't really solving it anymore. Yeah, yeah. I think if you like the idea of, uh, of lawyers, of being a lawyer, and you know you want a game that takes that on, but in a, a much lighter way and is a good battle for a head-to-head -head kind of gameplay, not in the same way you've probably seen a lot of other head-to-head -head matchups, but uh, with some of those same kind of things, you know, you are playing different effects on each other and bringing cards in and out sometimes of your discard pile, getting the chance to draw new cards and play new arguments, stuff like that. I want to mention that the case cards like this seem very serious, but your generic cards you bring throughout the case, I love the art so much. It's just so over the, this is like Phoenix Wright level kind of <laughs> <Okay>. just. <laughs> yeah. Very action-packed. In fact, it's I'm a little dramatic. disappointed that these objection tokens aren't just giant objection bubbles. <laughs> you can provide your own gavel if you want. Uh, maybe, maybe there's room for a variant where uh, one player is a judge and they just yell at everyone while you play. All kinds of things you can do. Uh, the game is called Lawyer Up, and the Kickstarter should be launching March 17th. We will have a link in our description once it is available. Uh, and we'd like to hear from you what you think about it. Do you side with the prosecution or the defense? Are you looking forward to some of the other cases they're supposedly working on a Salem witch trial theme, as well as a 1920s prohibition one. So there's lots of different variable variables and themes you can work in with this beyond just what we've got to play with. Mm -hmm. You can let us know in the comments down below. And of course, do check out that Kickstarter. But until then, I'm Will. I'm Jonathan. And this has been Roll for Crit. We would love it if you liked and subscribed to this channel and supported us on Patreon as well. For legal reasons, we've got to disclose we're on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter with more awesome content.